Welcome to this screencast on getting started with Mindscape Lightspeed. Here I have Microsoft Visual Studio open and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to create a console application targeting .NET Framework 3.5 so that we can use the new link capabilities of Lightspeed. Now if we call this project demo, click OK, we'll let Visual Studio create the project for us. And the first thing I'm going to be adding to this project is a Mindscape Lightspeed model. So add new item and you can find the model under the data tab lightspeed model and I'm going to call this the store model click add and it's added to our project and lightspeed has also been added as references both the lightspeed and the lightspeed.link references have been added automatically for us so we have an empty design surface here and we can take two approaches from this point. First we could choose to drag and drop on entities, value objects, set up the relationships, create inheritance hierarchies and those sorts of things and push those changes to the database. This is known as a model first approach or alternatively and the method that I'm going to use in this presentation we can drag and drop tables from an existing database on our computer. So I'm going to drop those on and this is a store so we've got all the different entities that you would expect to see. A customer, a cart, receipts, those sorts of things. Now the, the designer that ships with Lightspeed is incredibly powerful. You can choose to add properties, remove properties, create entities. You can then push those changes to the database. If somebody on your team prefers to work in the database they can make changes there and you can pick them up automatically with this update from source. You can go through and add XML documentation. You can configure eager load graphs, many different properties. We're not going to be diving much deeper than we've already looked here at the designer and if we choose save what happens is the Lightspeed designer will generate code behind for us. So these are all of the different entities that have been generated for the cart, cart items, customers and so on. This is incredibly helpful for us, it saves us having to write a lot of code ourselves and you'll also notice that these classes are partial. If you wish to add any custom implementations to, for example, cart, then create another class in your project, call it cart, make it partial so that you can add behaviours and capabilities to that entity. Alright, that's all we need to do around the Lightspeed model, we're all good to go. The next thing we want to do is set up some application configuration. If we go and add a new application configuration file, and just click add, there's three things that we need to add here. First we're going to need a connection string to talk to our database. So let's add that in. Okay, this is the standard connection strings block that came with .NET 2 and above, and we're defining a connection string named dev, and it's just connecting to a local SQL Server instance on my computer. The next thing we need to do is configure Lightspeed itself. So we add in a block for that. And you'll notice that this is a Lightspeed context block. Now these can, can, be, can, can be considered configuration for the databases that we wish to talk to. So for example we have one here named default and it's going to be using this dev connection string. We're also instructing Lightspeed that this is using SQL Server 2005 or above but we can configure many other options on this context if we want. For example the search engine, whether we're using pluralized names and much more. The third thing that we need to add is some configuration to tell the .NET framework how to interpret this block. And this is done through the configuration sections area. You may already have some of these in your project if you're building a web application, in which case you'll only need to add the section inside the connect, uh, config sections block. And you'll notice that we set up lightspeed contexts, that matches this, and we're basing it off the type mindscape.lightspeed.configuration.lightspeed configuration section within the mindscape lightspeed uh, assembly. That's all of the configuration that we need, so we can save this config and now we can dive into the code. The first thing that we're going to need to do is create a context object. So we'll just add a reference to that using Mindscape Lightspeed. Now the Lightspeed context is just that configuration that we're pulling from the, uh, from the application configuration that points to a database. So you'll see here that we create a Lightspeed context and we're passing in the type of a unit of work. A unit of work is effectively a session to our database and this here exists within our generated code in the store model. You'll see that it's created for us and it provides iQueryable implementation so that we can access strongly typed collections of carts, cart items, customers and so forth. So we can close that and you'll see that I'm not initializing this so the first thing we're going to want to do in our application here is actually 
pull in that configuration for this context from our application config. So place that there. Now you'll notice that I'm passing in a name of default. Now default maps directly to this name here. So if we were to change these settings in the Lightspeed config here, we will see that reflected in our application's Lightspeed context. This is useful when you're, for example, perhaps developing against SQL Server but then deploying against Oracle or wanting to change some of the configuration around Lightspeed when you deploy it. We can also go and change com context values programmatically. Here you can see all of the different options that are available, but for the time being just be aware that they're there but we're not going to change anything. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is start querying. So I'm going to add in a little bit of code here to make it easier for us to demonstrate how these queries are working. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is create a using block. So we're going to create a new unit of work. And we create this off the Lightspeed context. And we'll wrap that around these two queries here. Now what's going on here is that from this context we create this unit of work and you'll notice that it returns a store model unit of work as that's the type that we pass in here. Now a unit of work can, can be considered a session against that database. So we usually want to create a short lived unit of work where we batch up a bunch of updates or inserts. It's also where we would execute queries from. So in this case you can see I've added this helper um, console application lines here to say that we want to print out the number of products that are in our products table. So if we have a look at the unit of work we can see in here that we have those strongly typed collections to query against as well as a bunch of other things that we're not going to look at in this demonstration. So the first thing we want to do is create a new product. So let's go ahead and create that. So we want to go product, product equals new product and we're going to just set the name widgets and we're going to set the description Oopsie. now we need to add this product to our unit of work so we can go unit work dot add and we add the product now it's important to note that at this stage this is not being persisted to the database. This is simply queuing up work for our unit of work to add to the database when we make a save changes call. So we can say save changes and this is where the save where those where that work is that's being queued up is now persisted to the database. And the reason that we've wrapped this in a using statement is because when we hit this brace here, that unit of work will automatically be disposed and all of the connection related objects will be tidied up for us. So this is a great pattern for using a unit of work. Okay, so let's run this up and just prove that this number here, the count of products, should change from one number and increment by one here. So let's just run that up. A moment. Excellent. So we've increased from three products to four, so we know that something's gone into our database. The next thing we're going to want to do is read some data from our database. So let's comment out this block since we don't want to add the product twice. And let's write a query. Let's go and get the product that we've just added to the database out and print out its name to the screen. So we can say var product equals unit of work dot products dot single. Now this is where we can now use the link capabilities of Lightspeed. So we can go p where p dot name equals widgets. Okay, and we'll print that out to the screen console dot right line. Um, product.name. Okay, and if we run that up, we should hopefully see the two counts will be the same and the name of the product in the middle. Excellent. So you can write whatever link queries you'd like here. We're not going to do a deep dive into how link querying works, but suffice to say you'll be able to go and write whatever you want. All right, the next thing we want to do is update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this line here. We're going to get out the product we're then going to change the name to bolts 
now we're going to save those changes. So unit of work dot save changes. Okay, now you'll notice that I'm not having to call the unit of work dot add here. Now this is because we have loaded this product via the unit of work. It is already attached to the unit of work, so any changes that are made will be automatically flushed to the database when we call save changes. Okay, so we'll run this up and just hope that it doesn't create any exceptions. Cool, so that must have worked. Alright, and lastly we want to delete something. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll change this, we'll grab those two lines, we'll copy them. Actually we'll get, get rid of that one and we'll change that to bolts. And we'll comment out those two. So we get that product out and then we want to call unit of work dot remove and we pass in the entity that we wish to remove. So in this case it's bolts. So in this demonstration we should see that the count of products go from 4 to 3. So let's run this. Excellent. So from this very short getting started demonstration you should now understand how to create a light speed model, configure light speed and perform CRUD operations. We have other screencasts available on the website and we appreciate any feedback that you have on these screencasts by posting in our forums. Thank you very much.